we're so early in this industry and we have so far to go and what solar and energy is gonna look like a few years from now, it won't be recognizable. Like this is gonna be one of the biggest transitions that we've ever seen. 10 years from now, I think what you will see as standard in many places in the United States are bundled distributed energy solutions that are a combination of solar, smart controls, storage, lighting, better HVAC. It will all communicate with everything you use electronically in your house and optimize your use of energy. It'll optimize your use of uh, water and power without you having to think about it. Five years ago, smartphones were really new and, and few people had them and now everyone has a smartphone. And we're gonna start seeing that with smart solar. And what that means is it's not just about slapping panels on your roof or having an inverter or even having a battery. It's about the communication between those units and not just for the single home, but how that looks in your community and in your neighborhood. We still have to convince people that there's a value proposition and educate them on that. And I think 10 years from now, People will say, I know what that value proposition is. I know it's convenient and cost saving, um, and, I know, and I should just buy it. And the only question is, who do I get it from? How do I pay for it? This is just the beginning of the energy revolution, of the clean energy economy. And that's going to entail not just solar, but solar, storage, energy management as a whole. These markets are massive, and they are game changing, and they provide such clear economic advantages to the consumer. Uh, and they are universal. It doesn't matter what country you're in. That, coupled with some of the more advanced technologies we're working on that can provide energy to the impoverished, that can support solutions to end energy poverty around the world, are, are thrilling. They're thrilling and they're going to change the face of this planet. When we look 10 years out and start to expand what it means to think about energy, is it about access to energy for the billions of people who don't have access to energy? Um, is it about a cycle of energy poverty for so many people who live in homes that are incredibly inefficient um, and are paying a third or even more of their take home on energy costs? I think all of those things encompass the partnership of the future about really taking what we've learned in the first 10 years and saying, how can we amplify that to make the largest impact possible? Today, there's 1.5 billion people around the world who don't have access to electricity, and there's another billion that have intermittent access. And this is one of the greatest opportunities ever, is to bring a basic infrastructure to people who need it most.